10 years ago, the awesome iPhoto editing software was the reason to purchase a Mac. However, over the years, it started getting really slow and bulky, and Apple decided it's about time to replace it. I'm showing you the beta of Photos for Mac. I promise I'm not going to spend much time on this, but I can't not mention the icon for Photos for Mac. It is beautiful. Now, a lot of people yesterday on Twitter said, well, isn't it exactly the same as on iOS? And it is, but it's not. It's the same color wheel, flower, whatever you think it is, uh, but they've given it a little bit more depth because on iOS 7 and iOS 8, one of the issues is that it's so flat and so transparent that it almost seems blurry. Whereas on this version, they've beveled and embossed the edges a little bit, and then they've given a beautiful drop shadow right here, which makes the image look almost 3D. It's really, really great. It doesn't look skeuomorphic. It still looks very minimalist and simplistic, but it looks a lot better than the version on iOS, and I hope they bring the same icon to iOS 8.0.3 or whatever the next update is. Now, that same design style of minimalism is present in the app. It is really, really amazing by the way, this is kind of a tangent, just to see how fast that app opened and how fast this app is. But back to design. It's very minimalist. There is no skeuomorphism. And I felt that iPhoto was the last app on Yosemite that felt old. And so now that it's gone, this looks really, really great and feels really great. It's nothing showy or flashy. It's very, very simple with a white background, but it works really, really nicely. Now, like I mentioned, this app is fast. It opened really fast, but it scrolls fast. And that's where the action is important. I can scroll through my whole library at rapid speed, click on an image, it automatically opens, well, that's actually a bug. Some vertical images aren't displaying properly. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is a beta, um, but you can pinch out to get a more full view of your photos, just like you can do on your phone. You can pinch in to zoom in, obviously. Um, and then one of the issues with this is if you're on a mouse, you have to click this back arrow, which really sucks. And I'm kind of sad that Apple does that, and I wish they wouldn't. Um, because it, it just doesn't work quite as well. So if you're on a desktop PC and you don't have a Magic Trackpad, then you're kind of out of luck from the full, really, really nice experience. I thought that maybe this would do it, but this just makes the, the images themselves bigger, the little thumbnails. So you guys can see all my photos here from Bolivia. Um, you can see that a lot of them, these are, you know, they're all taken in Bolivia, but they don't have any GPS information on them. So um, right here, for example, if I right click it, I have to zoom in one more level. If I right click it, I can get the info. So I can see that it, this is actually a JPEG image, uh, but I have several raw files on here that are a lot, lot bigger in size, which kind of hopefully will impress you with how fast it is. Uh, let's see here, these are all JPEGs as well. Come on, I took raw photos for like a year. I don't know where they are, oh, here we go. Okay, so these are all shot in raw, right? So. If available, it shows lens information. I was just using, you know, the, the X10 is a point and shoot. So it shows you the metadata information, the ISO settings, the resolution, the size of the image. The raw files are 20 megabytes. So it just is impressive that it can scroll through all of them so quickly. And uh, it gives you that same information. This was previously available in Aperture, but it wasn't very descriptive in iPhoto. And so now it's really easily accessible and I really like that. If you click it, by the way, you can also click this little info icon. So it's not like it's a hidden button that Apple only has pros use. It's actually up here in this bar if you want. And so it looks really, really great. You can add a title to, a title to the photo, which is fantastic for searching. And it's just really, really pretty. Now. One other thing that's worth mentioning is that it has GPS location for um, GPS enabled cameras with GPS enabled metadata, and then also obviously your phone. So PhotoStream is now integrated into photos. So you can see iCloud right here. The iCloud photo library is, is all in one between your devices. And I feel that we're finally at the point where we're confident whether something is in the cloud or it's not. Until now, it's always been like, okay, now is it on my computer or is it on iCloud? It's not on my phone, I don't know why, why is it not syncing? And I feel that with iOS 8 and with my day that I've had with this app, that when I take a picture on my phone, it goes right to my photo library, which is really, really excellent, and it's finally working like it should. And we've been waiting literally two years for that. Now, one other thing that you're able to do that's pretty handy, uh, this was a picture that I took of the new Odyssey EL8s at the CES 2015 convention in Las Vegas. Uh, you can see uh, GPS location because this was taken in Las Vegas. You can see uh, Las Vegas Convention Center. It shows me the location of all the photos. That's back in Utah. <laughs> so we go to Vegas. You can pinch to zoom just like you'd be able to do anywhere else. Uh, this is pulling up a very 
not beautiful map. Thank you, Apple Maps. Why don't they just use Google Maps? Come on. Uh, no, Apple Maps is getting better. I, I won't bash them. Okay, so you can see this is the location of where I took the Odyssey uh, headphone picture, which is actually pretty close to where it was. That's not exactly right, but it's not too far off. This is, that's wrong too. GPS location inside of buildings is really bad. This was actually like right over here, so that's not really accurate. But this one's good, kind of. This was taken uh, like right here-ish. So, I mean, you guys get the general idea. It gives you a pretty accurate location based on your phone and you can see those on a map, which you were able to do with iPhoto, but it just seems more uh, accessible now, uh, better said. Now, if we go into the shared, uh, out, or this is the shared section, this kind of shows you your shared photo streams that you've shared with other people, and then people that share photo streams with you, uh, their photos will be viewable here. No one really uses that. My friends don't, I don't. I don't know if you do. Leave a comment below if you do. Um, and then obviously we have faces here. iPhoto has always been pretty good at facial detection once you, you know, told it this is me or, and you have to show it in, a, you know, a couple pictures, but it does a pretty good job after that. And it's gotten even better with photos. I, I defined myself as me, I think in two photos and it pulled up 139 photos. I might be in more than that. So I'll have to go through and see, but it gives you a pretty good idea. It's not as good as Facebook's, which is freaky, by the way. I upload a picture of me when I'm like a little kid and it knows it's me. And I upload a picture of my friend when he was 12 years old and knows it's him. It's freaking creepy. Anyways, we can click the faces button here and uh, it'll show you your actual face or the face of the person in every single photo. So you can see me, cute, young, uh, good looking, skinny. And then two years later in 2014, I was fat and out of shape and ugly. And uh, that's just how life is, kids. Um, <laughs> there's a new dedicated section for panoramas as well. And there's a dedicated section for videos, which is really fantastic. So let's go into the panorama section because there's a couple panoramas that I really like here. Let's use this one and let's edit this. As you can see right here, there's a bunch of issues. Uh, I don't know, my camera didn't stitch it very well and it's kind of off-centered. So let's just say I want to crop that. Plus that side of the mountain isn't really necessary and it kind of looks weird anyway. So let's crop that, bring this in to like right there, okay? I can also change the pitch which is pretty nice if I wanted to give it, you know, a different effect, but I kind of like it the way it is actually. But if I wanted to, let's say, let's bring it in a little bit, like half a percent, okay? Then I can click uh, done. It automatically crops and adjusts my photo. There's still some, some stitching issues right here, but, and right here. I'm seeing them all over the place now that I'm zoomed in, but it gives you a pretty good idea. Now, one of the things that I really like about this, and you may not like it if you're used to like cropping your nude photos that only have your face, but <laughs> it actually, sh <laughs> it saves the original by default. It doesn't ask if you want to mo modify the original. It just has the original and then it creates a new, which is great because you can revert. Or let's say I wanted to recrop it. I wanted to keep all my other settings, like my color settings, but I wanted to change the pitch back to zero. Well, I can do that and it's back to where it needs to be again, which is really, really fantastic. You can obviously rotate the image 180, well, you know, 90 degrees at a time. And then there's this button that is the auto enhance button on iOS, 8, uh, iOS 7 and iOS 8, and actually does a pretty good job. Uh, the same idea is, is here on the Mac. You can obviously do more uh, critical color editing in this adjustments tab, which we'll open in a minute, but there's nine filters, none of which are very good. I wish uh, Apple would buy ViscoCam already because they have way better filters than everyone else, but uh, that's life. They don't have it. So what are you going to do? But it's nice for, you know, a little bit of photo editing. Um, this is done automatically when I click that auto enhance button, but you can change uh, pretty, this is very, very similar to iOS, but a little bit more powerful. So it allows you to do fine tuning of exposure, highlighting shadows, etc. cetera, uh, a color as well. You can make it more saturated or less saturated, however you want to do it. And then you can obviously undo stuff by just hitting control or command Z. Um, if you do adjustments, you can see all of the stuff that you can change. There's a basic histogram. Uh, you can sharpen stuff, do vignetting if you want to give it a darker kind of uh, look. Oh, I accidentally hit noise reduction. Let's turn that off because it already looks kind of weird. We'll vignette the sides a little bit. Not that strong, but, you know, a little bit. Or you could even wash them out if you wanted to. So it gives you that kind of editing. There's a little bit more powerful editing. White balance I wouldn't consider super powerful, but that's available. One, one thing that is nice about it is that it finally has a, an eyedropper tool, which I don't believe was present in iPhoto. It may have been, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember it. So you can select your, wet, uh, your white point um, and it'll just you know find that there, which is really fantastic. Um, you can also do uh, leveling. This is a little bit more advanced, um, but 
it's great because it's a little bit more, it's easier to use than iPhoto, but it's more powerful. Yet it's it's not quite as powerful as Aperture, obviously, which is also discontinued, but it's a lot more organized and easy to use than Aperture was. So it's really like the best of both worlds. It's kind of an in-between. Oh, there's a retouching thing. I'll show you this. Let's find a picture of me that's really ugly. There are tons. I was in a really, really hot uh, South American country with tons of humidity for two years. So there's bound to be a hideous picture of myself. Uh, I'm trying to think of one in particular where I remember having lots of zits and not wanting to take a picture. Um, <laughs> oh, that's just 2014. Let's go here. Oh, that's a video. I know you guys are just so excited to see all my pictures of Bolivia. Oh, this was a really cool picture that I took. It's just, I like it. That could do some editing too. That's a little bit, you need a little bit more shadowing on that. But uh, I can do that now because it's pretty easy. If I scroll up, let's find a picture. I know there was one I did just a couple minutes ago. Um, I know you guys are like, Quinn, don't pretend to be so pretty. I know there's dozens of pictures where you look like crap. That's true. Um, let's do this one. Oh, my face is actually pretty clear on that one. Huh. What do you know? The more you know, right? Uh, let's zoom out. Come on. There's one where I remember just being hideous. Where is it? Uh, I don't know where it is. This one's pretty bad. I'm, I'm really sweaty in this one. So let's take, let's take this one. Okay, let's do retouching. Um, oh, by the way, the red eye only pops up when it recognizes that there is the possibility of someone having red eyes, which is pretty nice. Um, so you can't do that by accident, but you can change the size. This is basically like a stamp tool or a, I think it's called a dodge tool is the formal name. I don't know. Excuse me. But you can right click it and choose the source and then you just kind of go on top of where you want to edit out. So that's a little red. Just get rid of that. That. It's not as powerful as Photoshop, but it's also pretty easy and foolproof. Uh, which really, really works out. So those little things on my head, I still look sweaty and gross, but you guys get the idea. You can take out small blemishes, which is pretty nice. Now, that's the basic editing functions of Photos for Mac. It's not super advanced. You've seen that it's very fast. You can toggle through a bunch of different stuff at a time. It automatically has smart albums, and then you can also add uh, albums of your own. This was one that I took in Peru. It was a really cool panorama. Uh, this was in one of the main plazas. Um, <laughs> I cannot show that the stitching messed up. <laughs> so you look so goofy. I loved it. Anyway, um, you can go into projects here and this allows you to add projects, which a project is a fancy word for give us money. So this is their section where they sell you albums or books or what have you. And it's a little bit more accessible. So let's add an album here. Let's. You can either do you know, a book or a calendar or a card, slideshow prints. And Apple's made it a lot more accessible, not just in terms of functionality and ease of use, but also price-wise. They've improved the prices quite a bit, which is good. Um, it's now not, almost a good deal. It's not even a ripoff. So let's take this picture. Um, let's pretend that I had edited it and everything looked great. It's not edited and it doesn't look great, but let's pretend it did. Uh, we can click this little button here. Oh, by the way, uh, you can favorite pictures. This is one thing I wish they would change. You can't rate them like you can in Lightroom and you could in Aperture. You just have to say, I like it or not. So it's not a very good for organization based on that kind of deal. If you're a real photographer, obviously you're not going to be using this app anyway, but if you were, it's really hard to categorize photos from the same shoot. Um, you can also, there's quick sharing options. So I could automatically share it to Twitter. It's very much like the iOS 8 interface. It posts via OS 10, works great. I choose my Twitter account, it's fantastic, right? Uh, I can click this and say, let's make uh, prints out of this. So you can choose the prints, it'll auto size. I actually have pretty cheap panoramas. You can print a panorama. Oh, here you go, poster, uh, like 12 bucks. That's pretty good. Um, I won't do that because mine will look pixelized, but let's say that uh, you know, a four inch print is from 12 cents. So that's, if you only buy one, if you buy more, they're obviously cheaper. Let's go back, let's make this a card, okay? So I can go here and then click more. I'll make it a card. And then you can choose the card type. Again, really, really cheap. A flat card, double-sided card is a dollar. And that comes in an envelope with postage. So it's very, very competitive. You can change the theme, which are not quite ready. I mean, there's still a couple, I think these are pretty old templates. 
Like that doesn't look great. They could change that. But you know, the basic idea is, is the same. Let's just say it's a picture card. You can go onto the back here. You can change your title. You can change the font, all that other stuff, which is pretty nice. You can insert more photos, which is pretty cool too. Um, and then yeah, I believe there's a button here that makes it glossy. Oh yeah, so here's the layout here, which is pretty nice. And then you can change whether or not you want to change the theme, the size, or the format. So let's say yes. Oh, no, that's not right. There was one section, I swear. Oh, it was the poster. So the poster's 13 bucks, but you can say, I want this glossary, I want this um, regular. So it's, it's very easy to make it. And then you buy your card, it goes to a page, and you're able to, ch to choose where to mail it. And then it just charges your iCloud account, which is fantastic. So it's really, really great. This works excellent. Um, I will be using it, actually. I never used to send these because it was just too big a pain. But for Christmas cards, can you imagine how easy that is? Uh, it's way better than having to shutter stop or shutterfly them and then get them at your house and then write out all the labels by hand. Ugh. Just to have Apple send them right out for 99 cents each is a pretty sweet deal. Anyway, so that's Photos for App, uh, Photos for Mac. I wish I could tell you more. Uh, that's really all there is to it. It's very simple. It's very simplistic. It's very iOS 8-like. But I think it combines the best of both worlds. You get the power of Aperture. Well, that's not true. You get 70% of the power of Aperture. <laughs> and you get the simplicity of, of iPhoto, or, or even better, the simplicity of Photos for, for iOS right on your Mac. Uh, this will be available in the next couple of weeks once 10.10.3 makes it out into the wild. This is the, the first version of the, the first beta came out for developers yesterday. So we're still at least a few weeks out and this is not ready for prime time. I actually didn't run into any errors on this video, which was pretty good. But historically, I've had it forced quit or unexpectedly quit out of nowhere. It's just, it's still buggy. But hopefully, oh, I love this picture, by the way. Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. <laughs> hopefully within time uh, we can get things figured out and we'll have it on all of our machines soon enough i'm quinn of snazzy labs thank you so much for watching please subscribe rate comment and as always stay snazzy see you later folks